Pastor Kelly and Dolly, uh, Pastor Liberty Christian Center, Trinity, Texas. I was yeah. kind of looking around a while ago. There's a lot of Liberty Christian Centers out there. There are a ton of Liberty Christian Centers. There's only one in Trinity, Texas. That's right. And that's us. So praise God. <laughs> this big metropolis. Yeah. Good to be back with you. Uh, we we got a little shift on the last video. We're still We're still basically talking about the image of God. I mean, every time you talk, about the word you're talking about the image of god yeah this is the, you know, the word robed in flesh the, the, the express image yeah and we were talking about how the image of god should carry over into the church mm -hmm. and the church should be operating in the power and the authority the signs the wonders the love the compassion everything about the nature of god should be seen in the actions of the church right and as we finished the last video, I, I was thinking about where to go on this next video, and as soon, I had the thought, and then of what I wanted to do, and as soon as I thought it, it, it came, oh, you can't say that, and I thought, well, yeah, I can, yeah. you know. Yeah. And now, now it's not a time we were talking about. Now it's really not the time to play patty cake. No. Now it's not the time to be, you know, we want to have fun because we're on the winning team. Right. It's fun and it's an adventure, but it's serious business. It this is. is people's lives, people, the souls, of, you know. You don't want to this be sitting on the fence, yeah. just being warm. So you get hot or cold right now. It's time to make it's a It's important. Mm -hmm. And so the thought I had, though, was you can't say that, you know, because, uh, you know, this, this whole thing, the church is non-essential. You know, that's... You telling me the church is non-essential is you telling me that the that the head of the church, Jesus Christ, is non-essential, and His Father in heaven is non-essential. And just real quick, I looked up essential of the utmost importance, <laughs> indispensable, yes, necessary, yes. I'm sorry. But the church has never been more essential. Right now, the church of Jesus Christ <clears throat> is literally holding back the devil. Look at what the devil is doing right now. And the yeah. church is still here. Yeah. After the rapture of the church, it's not going to be very pretty. Because we are the salt of the earth. We are preserving the earth. Right now, we are the light. If you turn the light out, and all there is is evil because the devil will be totally in control of it. You're going to have some serious problems. Yeah. And even right now, you know. Um, essential is just a bare minimal. It's a, at least essential. Oh, it is more it, than that. It is literally more important than your next breath. It's the most essential thing in the I earth. I can't right even now. fathom why somebody would and have the people, audacity you know, to say something like humans that. Humans were made people. for communion, humans were made to be around each other, to be okay. around God. And, you know. Uh, that it's in us. That's right. And then to say, you know, I, I pastor a church and we we run, we, I help at the food pantry, and that's it's people, it's mm -hmm. greeting people, it's meeting people, it's being, and then for all of a sudden to wake up one day and oh, you can't do that no more. Wait a minute. Even at school, <laughs> we shut, shut down our yeah, school. You're shutting school. down. Every, you know, that's just and, and so. Jesus Christ is of the utmost importance right now yeah, in your absolutely. decision. You know, you can flip-flop around, you know, maybe in the past, you know, you, you had time to, you can figure it out later. Right now it's time to make a decision. <coughs> Here's the thing. We talked in the last video, you know, the church, since its inception, has had the government and religious leaders trying to shut it down. Always. One of the superheroes of doing that was Paul. Back when he was Saul of Tarsus in Acts chapter 9, Saul had decrees from the church to go arrest, jail, and shut down and destroy the church. He could of even Jesus murder Christ. them. He could yeah. even have them. He had, he had permission from the church to do whatever he wanted to shut this thing down. Mm -hmm. And so Paul thought, and he thought he was in service to God. He did. So in chapter 9, he's heading on his way with his little paper that says he can do what he wants, and he's on his way to Damascus. And he had an encounter. Yes, he did. He had an encounter with the Lord. Verse 3 says, As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there, was, there shined around him a light from heaven. 
he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He didn't say church. Yeah. You know? And then all these people do, oh, we just shut down the church. No, you're trying, you're, you're speaking out of your mouth that you're going to shut down Jesus. I know that's a that's a wrong side I of the argument. I know that most of the people in this country, most of the people in this country, confess Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Yeah. And so most people in America, most, not all, most, are born again. And I know that there are born again people on all the sides of the debate, on everything that's going on right now. There are born again people on every side of it. But when you start publicly declaring, and I know, you know, we all get deceived. The enemy can talk us into it. Maybe, you know, people really thought they had right motives. Maybe people really thought it was what was best for people. And maybe their experience with God or maybe their particular church they go to didn't really have any power in it, and maybe mm. they didn't really see any need in it, and they just thought it as a high-risk situation for really no purpose other than looking good for the community or having your social club. I get it. But that's not what all the churches are like. And the churches right now are literally your lifeline. Yeah. They're literally your lifeline. And um, so I think that there have been some bad choices made. And I think that it's got to it's got to get fixed. It's got to get fixed really quickly here because the Lord is saying it's being fixed right now. Yeah. Um, you know, He said we're the body of Christ, and we're supposed to be like Jesus in the earth. Why? And he's, oh. he's talking to us about um, a couple of different places where he's talking about the fruit that we produce should be good fruit. And I know a lot of people, a lot of Christians, are not producing good fruit. And so maybe when you look at the church as a whole, you're thinking, oh, they're all Christians. Oh, they're all going to heaven someday when they yeah. die. But you think that's the end of it. I mean, you know, we are staunch believers that that is step one, and there is so much more. You haven't even began to tap into it. But, you know, we have to be the group of people that produce good fruit. You know, I think a lot of times the church has got apathetic. I think that we've, you know, taken advantage of the, the grace of God and the situations that we've been in. We've all done some things. We've all made some decisions. But I'm telling you right now, in order for this whole situation to turn around, we have got to recognize God for who God yeah. is. And we have got to recognize the Lord Jesus for who he is. And we have got to get in our place. Yeah, it's, you know, and, 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 and like, you know, we said in the last video, we're not blaming the church. We're not calling the church out yeah, on this. We don't, we don't have I'm it all figured judge. out either. But mm -hmm. I, if you look at it and, you know, the church went through a pretty good time of, you know, re relative peace and prosperity. We did. We were and blessed. I see it kind of like one of those, you know, I watch a lot of military movies. It's like one of the movies, you know, you, you were in the battle. Book of Acts. They were in the battle. Yeah. Taking ground, pressing forward, moving forward. Mm -hmm. And somewhere along the line, you know, the the, the, the enemy and, and the church were, were across the field from each other. And the church kind of had them at bay. Yeah. And then we kind of started kind of, you know, there wasn't a whole lot of fighting going on, the peace and prosperity. And so we got a little lack. Well, during that, the enemy was just crawling at night. And you see in movies where at night the enemy would crawl mm -hmm. as quietly as they could. No we'll fighting, no, no, we'll no, we'll no not causing a bunch of racket and ruckus and stuff. And no, you know, just slowly but surely creeping right up to the line of the, where, the, where, the, you know, where, 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 where you were. And then the church looks up one day, oh, man, the enemy's right here at the gate. Well, we thought he was, you know, and so it's just something that God's still in control. This is, Jesus is still, we read the scriptures, it's all his, and he has power over all of it, and they're not going to beat him. Right, right. He's already won the war. Yeah. The book is finished. But, you know. We've got a harvest. We do. And the enemy is trying to steal the harvest from the church. Yeah. And... That ain't right. Right. And for whatever reason, the church is essential. You know, you look around, you look at the numbers of depression and suicide, and people just don't. I know. was I was there before yeah. I came into the church. That's exactly you where I was at. the one door <clears throat> that people the the lifeline that you, you you took your life preserver. You know, and I I feel like 
I feel like the church needs to wake up and we need to take back over everything. I do too. Because, you know, I think we ought to run the schools, I, I the hospitals. We ought to run the schools and we should uh, be running the hospitals we ought to be, and the nursing homes and we should be we should be taking care of everything. We ought to be in spread um, out in government from the from the from the local to the federal. The government doesn't need to do any of it. The government needs to just go back job. and to, to Washington and let us handle yeah. the people. You keep and we me, will. You keep me safe in my country. You fulfill, yeah, you fulfill your role according to the Constitution, and we'll handle the rest. Yeah. But, you know, the church, I, you know, we, we love the church. My goodness, we, we've spent our life in the we last 30 Jesus. years. We love Jesus. I do. And He's so wonderful. Just and this is not a, this is not a bummer. No. Uh, this is, this is a this victory is a, message. This is because, a happy time yeah. right now. I'm telling you what. If you, you we look have around, not been better off. Ever. No, yeah, we've prospered through this whole thing. But yeah. I'm just saying there are things going on behind the scenes that what you see out in the natural and what you see on your television screen is not the final say. And, and, and God, it doesn't matter what side you're on either. I mean, I'm not even talking I, about I, sides. I see both sides, and both of them <clears> are making horrible, horrible mistakes right now. The Lord is showing us. If you'll pray for discernment, yeah. You'll see where all the mistakes are being made on both sides. It's not about a side. It's about are we going to serve God or not? You know, and, and that's ultimately the only question you need to ask. I, th- I what I say, the, 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 I think we call this after salvation. Yeah. And you know, really, and, and I don't. And that's what we want to do. You know, when you're born again, you're a baby spirit. You're okay. a newborn baby spirit. And our the goal of this video is to teach. And yeah. to get you to mature spiritually. Yes. And that's all part of it. Growing up, you're going to make, we, we all make mistakes growing up. We all fall down when we start learning how to walk. We, we, we drop things, we spill things, we break things. That's just natural. That is. Part but we need to process. keep maturing. And the church needs to, to really seek, uh, we need to get on steroids right now, yeah. spiritually. Yeah. We need to get on the steroids spiritually and, and, and get get this thing back up to speed because, you know. You know, what the Lord is revealing to us right now is um, he's, he's moving right now. He is. He's moving. He's gotten up out of his chair. You know, when we were kids at home and everybody could just be doing whatever they were doing, literally my dad would come home and sit in his recliner to watch his TV and I would be on top of his head. You know, we would get on his shoulders yeah. and stuff while he's in his chair. Just It was just chaos. It was four kids, and we were just going everywhere, you know. And everything was fine until Mother would say, that's enough. And as soon as she did, he didn't even have a problem with what was going on. <laughs> but you know what he would do? He would stand up and say, what did your mother say? And literally, it was yeah. it was over. It was over. And so right now, you know, God's been just chilling out. We've all just been, you know, going crazy or whatever. But the God has stood up now. And, and he, he's, he's going he's gonna to put things in order right now. He just mentioned to me, too. I'm not, I'm not saying the church is in a bad spot. No, Because no. What, what's happening to the church right now is exactly what was happening to them in Acts. And Acts, we always go back to say Acts was the most powerful church mm-hmm. of, the, you know, He's pouring out more glory right now. Yeah, yeah, for you sure. see the signs and wonders and acts, but I'm telling you, it's more now yeah. because the battle has not, the, the, the battle's never stopped. Right. The, 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 the religious leaders and sections of government, have, they have been trying to stop the church for since its inception. Well, it's the enemy. It is, and I understand, and but I'm just, just saying, this is not anything special. Right. And the church has not lost power. Not at all. The church has actually gained power. And the enemy's still trying to shut it down. Yeah. And he can't do it. So, you know, maybe that was a little off track today for a spiritual maturity lesson. But well, we need to know. We need to understand that, that this is God's doing. Yeah. Jesus is the head. We're the body. And the church of Jesus Christ is going to prevail. And it's healthy and it's whole and it's And strong. it's going to represent an image of God and wash away all this stuff we're seeing out on the, you know, seeing right now will be gone tomorrow when the glory and the, the love of God flows yeah. out of the church. So praise God. You know, we're, we're going to keep going. To be going. a part of it, to be a yeah. part of it, it's just one decision away. One decision. We talked about it last time. Whosoever, that was the first message the church ever preached. Signs and wonders, and whosoever believeth on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you find yourself in, in that spot, hopefully, you know, you've got an outlet for, for Jesus. But... 
call on him. Amen? Amen. Praise God. We love you and we'll see you soon.